With my new computer set in and a few of my old programs being unable to be installed in time, I am forced to do yet another editorial instead of a full review. Apologies people, but that's just how it is unfortunately. I'm also putting the storyline on hold for a while until I build a better reputation for myself, because I feel that I may have been jumping the gun a little bit and should wait until I become a little more popular. So, um, yeah. Crimson Glow, I uh, know we were going to be doing a collab for a review, but we gotta um, delay that a little bit. I'm sorry, that's my bad, but I really, really think we jumped the gun a little bit. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. But don't worry, once everything's back up and running, we'll pick up right where we left off. Until then, consider future episodes separate from the story's continuity until further notice. <sighs> with that said, on with the show! Okay, so this has been bugging me for a while, so I'm going to do what I usually do when something is on my mind, like that really annoying song stuck in your head. I ramble to myself until I find the answer somewhere in this thick skull of mine, and then wait for others to give their take on the topic in hopes of finding a method to the madness. Now, with that said, that isn't to say I don't have a few theories of my own as to why people willingly play bad games. It's just that... I doubt these theories hold a lot of water. Or, who knows, maybe these are the right theories and I got lucky, who knows. Anyways, let's get on with it already. It's well known by this point that a lot of bad games come out. For every good game, there are three or two bad ones that are either cheap cash to sucker in ignorant casual gamers for money, unfinished bug-riddled garbage, or just not a good game, no matter how hard the developers worked on it. It's even worse now ever since Steam started doing Greenlight in early access. I mean, sure, there are some great gems out there like The Forest and Subnautica, and even a few that turned into fantastic games and got fully released, like The Escapists and Fight the Dragon. There are other games as well, though. You see, there's two types of bad early access games. The first ones are only bad because it's just best to just let them get further into development. There's not much to do, or there's a lot of bugs. No biggie, right? I'm sure the developers will patch this stuff out soon, right? Right? Ugh, yeah. Then there's the other bad early access game. The developers got their money and they ran with it, abandoning the development of what could be a really cool game, said to get into permanent limbo. Isomer, I'm looking at you. Your life was cut far too short. If they had taken the time to make this game a little more accessible and fixed the horrid method of conveying the graphics to you, this game could have been great. But this game hasn't seen an update since the end of August 2014. Ah. Sorry, sorry, that was tangential. Back to the topic at hand. With all these bad games out there, I have to ask why some people willingly play these games. I mean, hell, not just play them, like them. Even defend them if someone calls the games bad. Now, let's get a disclaimer out of the way first. A bad game is not a game that a lot of people consider a bad game, just because it doesn't fit their personal preference on what the game should be like. A lot of people hate Diablo 3. I like Diablo 3, but I also like Torchlight 2 and Path of Exile. It's all a matter of personal taste with games like that. In fact, note to self, review Diablo 3. For the sake of convenience, let's narrow down what makes a bad game. Dumb characters, cliched and or poorly written story, bugs up the ass, ugly graphics, and the one sin you must never commit, boring or just plain bad gameplay. Now, I don't care who you are, nobody likes playing a game with bad gameplay. It's the reason you're playing a game. That's why we call it gameplay. But enough about that. But enough about that. There are a lot of people who genuinely enjoy playing bad games, especially old bad games. If you play an old bad game, all bets are off. The gameplay can be downright terrible and yet you could be having a blast. Why do we do this? I mean, there are people who make a living getting angry at bad games, and yet when they're out of character, they're more fascinated and amused by how bad these games are, rather than just straight up hate them. Look at some episodes of Angry Video Game Nerd and then watch a few episodes of James and Mike Plays and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So... Why? Why is this so amusing to us? Why are there so many games out there that we hate, and so many games we like, but they're all equally terrible? 
Well, let's get the obvious one out of the way first. I mean, first off, there's the old-fashioned standby, when something is so bad it's good. It's called the B-movie effect, where you have a game that you put your heart and soul into, but it just didn't pan out the way you thought it did, and now you have this game that by all accounts should be horrible, but it's just so fascinating how bad it is. And somehow it transcends being bad and joins the ranks of all time classics such as Super Mario Brothers. Hell, your game could be so bad that it becomes more popular than Mario. A lot of people say that fame is fleeting, but infamy lasts forever. Well, with games like Ride to Hell Retribution, Duke Nukem Forever, and E.T. for the Atari 2600, I'd say there's certainly a strong case to support that statement. But are there any other reasons to play these games? You know, besides the B-movie effect? I think there is, though I'm really going out on a limb here. You see, there's this little part of our brain that everyone hates, have problems indulging it to find out what the payoff is, if it's worth it or not. Curiosity. Let's look at a scenario. You just watched the Angry Video Game Nerds review on Godzilla for the NES. You're fascinated by what you're watching, and some part of your brain says to yourself, well, I don't know, this doesn't seem that bad. And so you take a look at it, play it for a little while, and you find that under the proper circumstances, let's say a group of friends with you and you're drinking lots of booze, you find yourself enjoying this game. Now I know I could be wrong about these things, I mean I hardly know why I play bad games. I mostly just play them for the sake of reviews. I know for a fact that I have not been having a whole lot of fun playing Crystal Catacombs, but I talked to a couple of people who think that it's a genuinely good game. Now I will never agree with them on that statement. I mean there are so many contradictions in the gameplay mechanics that just appall me as to why the developers thought that what they did was a genuinely good idea. But hey. There are some people who think otherwise, but that's the wonderful thing about this community, isn't it? We're all just here to discuss our opinions, to see what's good, what's bad, but in the end, sometimes a bad game just might be a little better for someone else than it is for you. Until next time, everybody, this is the Blazer of the Terabad, and thank you for listening to my ramblings.